So um, I woke up this morning feeling really excited. Batteries recharged, just like my mobile phone, standing in front of my bathroom mirror, brushing my teeth. All by a sudden, I started to remember some of my dreams. I remember dreaming about my grandmother, or mother's mother, as I would say here in Norway. She was this incredibly tiny woman with superhero strength. She was working hard all her life, raising four kids on her own after having lost her husband to the sea. I used to pop around, help out with some of the chores, such as you know, vacuum cleaning, for which she gave me some coin, always telling me very strictly not to spend it all at once. Um, I also remember my grandfather, or father's father. He always had to be clean-shaven to get that hug from his wife, my other grandmother. And because of a heart condition, he had to take some tablets that contained nitroglycerin. And for a young child at the time, that was kind of cool. Imagine having a grandparent eating what dynamite is made of. <laughs> All my grandparents are dead now, um, but are very much alive in here and in here. My grandparents really made me who I am today. They instilled this sense of responsibility in me. Responsibility for myself and for my actions, responsibility for my family, responsibility for the society, the environment that I live in, very often referred to as the village, and a responsibility to all of those who I share this village with. This notion of responsibility have kind of followed me throughout my life. Today, I'm a university professor uh, and with a PhD focusing on leadership, and to me, leadership really is about responsibility. But we do have a great challenge ahead of us, because most of what is written about leadership and most leadership practice is really not about leadership at all. It's about leaders. We seem to have this obsession about individuals. We seem to have this obsession about individual success, about power, about money. And what is kind of scary is that most of these leadership theories and practices don't mention the responsibility to the wider village or environment, if you like. And that's not good enough. Hence, part of my work is to try to refocus the way we perceive leadership. So to me, leadership is about the shared pursuit of delivering on purpose. It's about the shared pursuit of delivering on purpose. We have many, many leaders who don't provide leadership. And we have a lot of people who do provide leadership who don't perceive themselves as leaders because the title is not important to them. What they do is important to them. So, what is this purpose I'm referring to? So leadership is a shared pursuit of delivering on purpose. Well, one day, my son, 10-year-old Oliver, comes home from school, he looks at me, and he says, Papa, I'm gonna ask you a rhetorical question. And I'm thinking, oh my. He looks at me and he says, why do we destroy all this rainforest if it leaves us with less oxygen to breathe? And by the way, what is the point of money if we are all dead? Now, um, uh, there is a rhetorical question for you, all right. And it really shines a light on what I perceive as being a purpose. The purpose of sustainable development. The purpose of finding solutions to the climate crisis. And the purpose of survival. So let's take the rainforest as an example. Because of modern satellite technology, we know for a fact that last month, we lost the equivalent of two football pitches of Brazilian 
rainforest every single minute. So let's think about that for a second. We lost two football pitches of rainforest every minute. And this makes absolutely no sense because we all want to live longer and healthier lives. We all want our children to be better off than what we are. But at the moment, we are keeping ourselves pretty busy burning down the very village we want our kids to inherit. We are finding ourselves very busy being engaged in committing collective suicide. Because through our very own actions, we're most likely killing our own future generations. The climate crisis is by far the biggest leadership challenge we have ever faced. And unfortunately, most of our former leaders are letting us down. Most of our political leaders are focused on that next election. Most of our business leaders are focused on that bonus and how to spend it. But we, we will have to deal with this together because simply we have no other choice. So how do we do this? How do we fix the climate crisis? How do we save the planet? Well, I believe what is requi required is a change of mindset. We need to wake up, smell the coffee, and take full responsibility for the climate crisis that we are experiencing. Then we need to take full responsibility of finding the solutions and implementing those very solutions. And the way to do that, I believe, is that we all need to go mad. And not just a little bit. And by mad, I mean that we all need to make a difference. We don't need to wait for anyone else to make a difference. We can all make a difference ourselves. And I'm going to give you two examples. Patagonia, an American apparel company, they just donated $10 million to environmental causes. And they didn't pluck this figure out of thin air. They just received a $10 million tax cut. And to them, paying $10 million less in tax meant $10 million less for health education, and the environment. Most other organizations kept that money. But we all have a choice to invest in the future. But of course, we don't need to be a corporate climate warrior to make a difference. All of us can be mad right here, right now. We don't need anyone's permission. We don't need anyone's funding. So here the other day, I saw this picture on Instagram. And I, in this picture, it was a bucket and a chalkboard stating, free cup of coffee to everyone who fills this bucket with litter from the beach. Well, first of all, we should stop littering, okay? Uh, but second, we can all fill that bucket with litter. We can all write that message, and we can all give someone that coffee. So by now you understand that I look at leadership as a shared responsibility, the shared pursuit of delivering on purpose. And I believe there is a way we can all be mad, because this is not a molding process. This is not about being someone else. So what I am suggesting is that we are all epically mad. And it starts with the E, E for energy. We all have energy, and we all have a choice how to spend this energy. Are we going to spend our energy and time pointing at others? Moaning, complaining, saying, this is not my fault. This is not my, not my responsibility. Or are we going to be proactive and say, no matter how little my effort might be, it's an effort. Our choice. 
Then we have the P for purpose. And purpose is something we rarely talk about. That being the private lives or organizational life. I did not really think about purpose before I became a parent. Now Oliver is my purpose. But not Oliver as one individual. Oliver represents to me his generation and future generations. Then we have I for identity. A lot of leadership development is all about making you be someone you are not. Well, we should all be the best that we can be. And when we look at the question about identity, we need to know what is our purpose? What are my values? What's my ethics? What do I do and what will I never do? Find ourselves, look in that mirror, and be very clear about who we are. Then we have C for courage. It takes a lot of courage to actually have a purpose and stand up for your purpose. It takes courage to ask questions. It takes courage to try and fail and learn, and then I'm gonna try again. Courage. And then we have this tiny word, ally. And this is the glue word. This is the word that glues together our epicness with our madness. And this is about we can all be mad on our own, Every single one of us can make a difference, but together we can make more of a difference. So we can find people with a shared mindset and a shared or similar purpose, we can come together and join or create a movement. I believe there is a happy ending to this story. I believe there are solutions to the climate crisis but I believe it takes a change of mindset. I think we all need to take that responsibility for the climate crisis. I think we need to take the responsibility to find and implement the solutions, and we need to stop pointing at others. I think we all need to wake up and take that responsibility to be mad. Here today, I started thinking about my grandparents, and how much they have meant to me, and how much they have shaped me. Right here, right now, I'm thinking about what will my future grandchildren think about me? Will they think that I was mad? Will they think that I left them better or worse off? Will they think that I did my bit to solve the climate crisis? Or will they think that I contributed and committed this uh, shared approach to suicide, which we're involved in. It's up to them and it's up to me. I can do what I can do. But on that note, I would like to leave you with a challenge. And the challenge is that we can go epically mad together. We can step up to the plate, we can take responsibility, we can do all we can do, no matter how small or big that is, and we can show our children, grandchildren, and future grandchildren that we did step up to the plate, and we did all that we can do. Thank you.